Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun channel. Just wanted to make a real quick short video talking about deep fakes. Now I've talked about deep fakes a lot. We have a big segment on deep fakes on Canary Cry News Talk every time a story comes up. And I just wanted to share with you a quick thought about how relevant this topic of deep fakes is going to be as it becomes much more prevalent and common in our political campaigns. And of course, it's been used last time, this time. I think it's going to be used some more. There's stories out there like this one from 972mag.com. Leftists for BB deep fake pro Netanyahu propaganda exposed, where according to a series of Facebook posts, the Israeli prime minister is winning over left wing followers, except that none of the people in question exist, where <laughs> they chose the name Sharon Epstein. Yeah, weird name to pick, right? And I guess she was a left winger and she changed her mind. She became a Netanyahu supporter, except one big problem. Sharon Epstein does not exist. It is a fake account. The whole thing is based on deep fakes. And it just goes to show how little we can trust on the internet as we move forward here and how this is setting up a great Hegelian dialectic for all kinds of biometric confirmation and stuff like that, along with blockchain technology, which is a double-edged sword. I've talked about this. On one hand, it's going to route out a lot of corruption. It's going to make it so people can't do deep fakes and fake their identity and lie online and stuff like that, especially politicians. It's going to be very difficult for them to lie in public because a lot of information that they say will definitely be recorded. And then whatever documents they decide to sign and everything, those will also be online with an immutable ledger. And once that takes place, the discrepancies are going to become much more easily identifiable by people out there. So we are moving into that crazy world where everything is highly verifiable on the blockchain. But again, it's a double edged sword because on one hand, it's good. It's going to take out a lot of corruption. But on the other hand, we are going to become much more reliant on these technologies to have a trustless environment. That is to say, we don't have to trust a third party. We can just trust the blockchain because you can't change information, uh, at least digital information on the blockchain once it is recorded there. This discovermagazine.com headline, Deep Fake, The Dark Origins of Fake Videos and Their Potential to Wreak Havoc Online. Here's another one from biometricupdate.com. Deep Fakes declared top AI threat, biometrics and content attribution scheme proposed to detect them. And this dailystar.co.uk article says Deep Fake of Tom Hanks that easily passes as real made for less than $100. And of course, there's a lot of stuff surrounding Tom Hanks and his escape to Greece and all that kind of stuff related to the speculations about his dealings with underaged people. But the bottom line is this Matthew 24 verses four through eight talks about deception. This was a very important verse for me at the time when I was learning about all this stuff back about 12 years ago now. And I think it applies even more today because the disciples ask Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered, see to it that no one deceives you because we're in an age of deceit, right? For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. Now, in the context of deep fakes, how easy is it to create a politician or a quasi politician that may or may not even exist? but is saying all the right things that's getting all kinds of support online, regardless of what political side of the aisle you're on. This is very possible. And the proof is in the Q anon because Q has created this huge movement based on anonymous posts on 4chan and Hachikung. And it's just one of those things where you don't know who it is, but Hey, you have this belief. People have this belief that it's good people, white hats within the military industrial complex. Imagine if there was some individual with a face that came out to try to do the same thing. And I know that triggers people. And, uh, you know, I've shared my opinions about the whole QAnon thing, but I'm just using it as an example here because it's going to become even more intense. We are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. I mean, the, the conversation about rumors of wars I don't know if there's a better description of social media in general, 
because none of it's verifiable unless you're there. A lot of it we take at face value, but as we know, things are going to become much more deceptive as things go on here. But see to it that you are not alarmed. We shouldn't be alarmed by this stuff. These things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places, which we know now with this whole Rona thing, famines are coming. Food prices are going to go crazy. I know I have personal friends who have been hard at work for several years now to develop local food supplies for not just themselves, but their local community. And if we can scale that to other parts of the world, then people are going to be able to sustain themselves without the help of some kind of government or big corporation to help distribute the food. That's coming. Earthquakes are definitely on the rise everywhere. But these are all the beginning of birth pains. This is just the beginning, folks. And I know some people are having prophetic dreams about the rapture happening next month and all this stuff. And I say praise God if it does, even though I'm not a pre-trip guy. But I'm preparing for how I can sustain not just my family, but the ability to share the gospel and continue to spread the gospel. Because later here, from verse 12 to 14, it says, Because of the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, and the one who preserves to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So I wanted to keep this very short, very sweet, and show you that there's a lot of stuff that Jesus said that is more applicable today than ever before in recorded human history or known human history. And you don't have to necessarily use the type of dispensational eschatological interpretations of a peace deal, which I would argue is not necessarily a peace deal down in Daniel 9.27 there, to suggest that we're living in prophetic times. We may have disagreements with that. That's fine. But I think as we move forward here, as the remnant of the church, I think it's pretty clear what we're supposed to do here. We're supposed to continue to share the gospel any which way we can. And I'm going to continue doing that as long as I can. YouTube has pretty much destroyed this channel. It's demonetized. Videos are getting deleted. They throttle live streams. Less than 1% of the subscribers are getting notifications or even watching the live streams. I know some of you guys hate Basil or whatever, but that's your problem, not mine. We're definitely reaching a different generation of people, and I think it's important to show them these principles that Jesus taught in relation to biblical prophecy, not just particular interpretations or the timing of things because no one knows the day or the hour. So rant over. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for your support over the years. I'm going to keep publishing whether people show up or not. I'm on library.tv. I'm on BitChute. But to report the day-to-day -day news, I am definitely doing that on Canary Cry News Talk the most just because we're developing a community there. It's a great community of people, of believers that are level-headed. we got a bunch of producers helping out the show. It's, I think, the best way to do it because I'm not here to spread fear. I know some people love the fear-mongering. I'm not here to spread fear. Even Age of Deceit, I know there was ominous music and stuff in the background, but it wasn't to spread fear. It was to just show the reality of the situation that we're in. And we're coming up on nine years since Age of Deceit, Fallen Angels, and the New World Order was published. And I just think it's important that we keep a level head and keep the important thing the important thing as we move on. So that being said, thank you guys for watching. Have an awesome day. God bless.